Today I'm going to review Emulator, a multi-touch overlay for Tractor Pro. It's written in .NET and therefore only runs on the Windows platform natively. Well, in fact it only runs on Windows 7 because it uses all the new touch APIs introduced in .NET 4. For reviewing I've got this Acer T230H dual touch monitor. Uh, it's just a consumer level device for around 300 euros, but it does its job quite well. So um, emulator generated quite some fuss in the DJ scene and also general scene. It's been tooted uh, to be the future of DJing. Today I'm going to show you what it's all about. Let's start. I already shot this review in October 2010 but then decided not to release it because I used a 60 inch screen which is just too big to DJ on. Except there's some kind of giant. Let's start right from the beginning. After installing emulator you need to start Tractor Pro and load up this special emulator TSI file. As you may have guessed, Emulator communicates with Tractor via MIDI. To be precise, it uses a virtual MIDI device to transfer MIDI data between programs. These are also called MIDI loopback devices. On Windows you need a program to accomplish this. Emulator installs the free Loopy one MIDI driver automatically. This is the main screen of Emulator. On the top you assign the MIDI device you are using. In the middle are four options, but only Tractor and Draw work in version 1.4. The drawing mode is for debugging or very creative DJs only. You can check if your fingers can be detected and tracked by your touch device. I'm trying to draw vinyl here, but it's rather abstract. Maybe add some colors? No, not really. Let's start a Tractor overlay. As you can see, its interface is using vibrant colors, which makes it easy to recognize all the controls. You can also see parts of the original Tractor interface like the top bar and decks. That's also the reason why I'm using Tractor Pro 1 here. It works with the new one as well but doesn't sit in the right spot. Pressing that big button at the bottom shows Tractor's file browser. You can either select the track directly or by scrolling through the list by pressing one of those weird looking buttons. You load the track by pressing the arrow corresponding to the direction of the deck or via drag and drop from the browser. Ah, I almost forget starting to record our mix in Tractor. You can't do that in Emulator for some reason, so I need to switch back to Tractor for a second. Turn it on and go back. Now that we are ready, let's try the transport controls. There are no pitch faders, so you would need to pitch with these two buttons. Besides, beat matching using a touch screen is a real pain, so you will rely most of the time on sync anyways. The loop section is very comprehensive, but I couldn't find out what's the difference between the upper and lower bar. The EQ rotaries feel pretty good and responsive. The orange filter button even snaps back into its default position after lifting the finger off it. This behavior can be activated for the other EQs as well. You can't see this right now because my hand is in the way. Using multiple fingers at once is also no problem and works as you would expect from a multi-touch overlay. If they would have been more creative with their controls, you would probably be even able to control more at once than you could on the real mixer. Imagine controlling all the cues with one finger. I will show you an example at the end of this video.
There are two shift buttons for every deck. I couldn't find out what the first one does. The second one turns the loop in and out buttons into pitch bend buttons. This is the main control panel you can also find in Tractor Pro. With volume and headphone settings, quantizing snap buttons, you can also switch between internal and external master clock here. Some of you might have been wondering about the missing crossfader. It isn't visible in the default view. I pressed all of the cryptic buttons until I found this one. By pressing the arrow buttons on each side you make it snap back to a side if you lift your finger off the fader. This is confusing at first but can be pretty useful if your touch device isn't very responsive. It's time to look at the effect section. You can activate the effect decks for each deck here. Then you have to change to the FX page, turn up dry wet knob, press the on button and turn up each effect parameter. In my opinion this is too complicated for a touch system. It should be instantly accessible super knobs which turn on effects instantly or even better controls. You can also search for tracks using an on-screen keyboard. It's buttons which come from this Microsoft Surface SDK give nice visual feedback. I have no clue though what the mouse button does. You can control emulator with a mouse if you activate it. At least that's what I would have guessed. So interested DJs without a touch device are out of luck here. What I'm also missing is support for 4 decks. The overlay looks clean and futuristic, but the default view lacks some important features the DJ would want to have at his fingertips at all times, like the effect controls. Now it's time to draw a conclusion. Emulator is a nice first try, and also well executed, it actually works pretty well. But, uh, in my opinion, I think they don't really get what touch interfaces and multi-touch are about. Well, they try to to reinvent the wheel, have all this co these controls we already have on physical devices and I rather press real buttons, slide real faders and turn real knobs than, um, than doing that on a touch screen with no tactile feedback. DJs love touching vinyl, CDs, buttons and other controls and to drive them away from it, emulator would have to offer something new, something they can't accomplish on these devices. But as the name suggests, it only emulates stuff we already know, so I don't see anyone switching soon to it. If you have good ideas, hook me up with them. Thanks for watching. Thank you.